From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Our top story this evening, the Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation hosted a forum on the interior gas trucking project last night. Several project stakeholders spoke and took questions from more than 100 people that packed the Westmark Gold Room. Jamie Schwartzwald attended the forum and files this report. That number is $13 or less. Chris Brown, regional manager for MWH, the private contractor working with the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority on the Interior Energy Project, announced last night that the estimated cost to truck natural gas to the Fairbanks gate will be less than $13 per thousand cubic feet. We have gone through a, a pretty intensive cost estimating process. It is not quite complete. We um, anticipate that costs will continue to, to come down. We're not exactly sure how much, but we can pretty confidently say that at this point, we believe that we can bring gas, LNG, to the Fairbanks City Gate for under $13. Now that estimate is not the cost to the burner, as utilities such as Fairbanks Natural Gas and the Interior Gas Utility are now working towards determining storage and distribution costs. Those costs are estimated to be $6.50 per thousand cubic feet. ADA officials say the less than $13 delivery cost is on the high range, with financial close set for December 15th. Uh, and right now we're looking at a price delivered to Fairbanks of about $12.50, which will be a comfortable, economically feasible number. Uh, as that number gets closer to 13, it gets a little bit, it gets more and more difficult to, to have an economically feasible project. And we've started, started looking at other parts of the value chain to really start squeezing down on price. The Alaska LNG project held an open house just down the hall in the Yukon Room. It was one of 12 open houses on the project to be held across the state. The Alaska LNG project will take gas from Prudhoe Bay and Point Thompson to a gas treatment plant on the north slope. An 800-mile pipeline would then transport up to 3.5 billion cubic feet of gas per day from the slope to a liquefaction plant on the Kenai Peninsula. There would be five takeoff points to serve Alaskan markets, including Fairbanks. Organizers say the project has been well received at previous open houses. In all of our meetings, people are very supportive in Alaska. We've been wanting a gas pipeline of some sort for a long time. So this, this is an LNG project. Obviously, it has a gas pipeline component from the North Slope. The current cost estimate for the Alaska LNG project is 45 to $65 billion and could create up to 16,000 jobs in Alaska. Jamie Schwartzwald reporting. There is still no winner declared in the Alaska governor's race. At last report, the walker Malot ticket was leading by just under 2%. Members of their transition team say it will be looking at 15 different policy areas that need to be addressed before going into office. Walker says the team will not be focused on who is staying or leaving the governor's office. He also says he does not have a specific agenda items to address immediately if he should take office. Instead, he wants to look at the big picture. Local educators are going beyond suicide prevention talks inside the classroom and launching a special education seminar that trains local high school students to recognize the first signs of suicidal behavior. The program is called Friends for Life. It's the first ever high school-wide suicide prevention event hosted by the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District. Earlier today, students listened to suicide prevention experts and also participated in discussions on recognizing the signs of depression and how the students could help those suffering from it. Prevention coordinator Montine Jackson says that the program is designed to let students take control of the information given to them so they can go on informing their peers about what they learned. We're providing an opportunity, a train the trainer model, to train these high school students from across our district, from our major um, high schools, five uh, major high schools, and a couple of our alternative schools like F.E. Cochran. We're training students to be the gatekeepers and the trainers to go back to their home schools and train other students about how to acknowledge when a friend or themselves, they might be in need of, of support, how to care and who to tell in and out of school. Well, we're not breaking any weather records, but the weather is a broken record. With more on that now, we turn to Mike Schultz with our first look at weather. Mike. I couldn't have said it any better. It's the same thing every day, although you can't complain about it, especially what's going on in the lower 48. We'll tell you about that later on. 
But as far as we're concerned, no change. Temperatures are going to continue right about where they have been. Maybe a little bit cooler tomorrow, but then warming up again on the weekend. Speaking of temperatures, let's take a look around the interior. As you can see, Fairbanks, North Pole, and Fort Wayne, right all around 20 degrees. 17 degrees at Allison Air Force Base and Delta Junction. While over to the west, it's a little warmer. 32 degrees in Nenana, Denali Park, down to 12 degrees right now. And we are looking, like I said, at temperatures slowly warming up into the weekend. In the lower 48, just the opposite. Wow, what a a mess they've got down there. We'll tell you all about it with all the weather later on. Daryl? All right, very well. Thank you, Mike. When we come back, customers at Value Village were a little startled last night when fire crews arrived at the store. Also, it's time once again for Fairbanks Flavor. Tonight, Lisa shows us how to cook shrimp scampi, and that sounds good. Stay with us. Welcome back to the broadcast. Alaska Communications has been ordered to provide information to the Fairbanks North Star Borough so that 911 emergency service can be improved. The borough sued ACS in August, saying the company was not providing updated phone listings needed to keep the 911 system current. Alaska Communications demanded compensation for the information. Superior Court Judge Beth Harbison granted the borough's request for an injunction ordering ACS to provide updated phone information on thousands of people in the borough. It also said ACS should provide its list of subscribers to a borough computer site daily. The judge's order was effective immediately. An Anchorage animal control officer called for state troopers yesterday after finding one dog dead and 13 others in poor condition at an address in Girdwood. 13 dogs were emaciated and were to be taken to the Anchorage shelter, according to troopers and animal control officials. Now, troopers described the case as an instance of cruelty to animals, but have not said whether any charges will be filed. Troopers did not name the owner or owners of the dog and dogs and said the investigation is ongoing. These dogs are the kind of dogs that are used for uh, mushing dog sleds, and uh, they were, seem like they haven't been uh, fed and watered in quite some time in pretty bad shape. The 1st Striker Brigade combat team at Fort Wainwright started loading tactical vehicles and equipment from the post onto train cars bound for Fort Irwin, California, and will continue the process through next week. The Striker Brigade is scheduled to conduct their capstone training exercise at the U.S. Army's National Training Center at Fort Irwin in January, and they're beginning the logistical movements now. The soldiers are expected to be deployed to California throughout the month of January for the exercise, returning to Interior Alaska in February. Well, customers shopping at a local thrift store last night in Fairbanks were evacuated by staff members after they noticed the smell of smoke. Value Village customers were asked to step out of the store last night so Fairbanks firefighters could investigate the peculiar smoky scent inside the shop. Assistant Chief Ernie Mesowitz said the smoke originating from outside managed to make its way into the store through a ventilation duct on the left side of the building. Customers were let back inside the building a short time later. Mesowet says that staff members acted correctly by evacuating the store and keeping their customers safe from what could have been a potential fire. Management was right on the money. They went over there and they were concerned about the people. They got them out of the building just in case. They called the fire department. We were able to check and, you know, in this case, it, it turned out to be nothing and everybody went back in a few minutes later. And it is time now for this week's edition of Fairbanks Flavor. Buongiorno, welcome to Gambardella's Pastabella downtown. I'm Lisa Gambardella, and we're gonna make a delicious shrimp scampi today. I've already pre-cooked some onions because I like them to cook for a long time. I'm also gonna put some garlic in here. Let that taste, let that flavor come out. Some olive oil. And right away with my lovely shrimp. Smells so good already. Wow, look at that. Got a nice hot pan. Flash it with some white wine. Woo! Shrimp scampi. Love it, love it, love it. Now, some lemon juice, fresh lemon. And I even like to put some wheels of lemon right in there because the rind is going to give it a little more zip. Turn those shrimp. Look at that. I love sautés because you can have a fresh, delicious meal in minutes, literally. Just have all your goodies ready to go. There we go. Oh, that looks fantastic. And I love to use angel hair pasta. I think it really picks up the sauce nicely. Mmm. Wow. And a few fresh tomatoes. 
look at that. Delicious shrimp scampi at Gambardella's Pasta Bella. Doesn't get any better than that. See our recipes at webcenter11.com. Brought to you by Gambardella's Pasta Bella. Hmm. Interesting uh, recipe there. Yeah, it's pretty right simple. Now. Yeah, <laughs> very good. <laughs> All right, so jo Joe joins me now in sports. Yeah. And what people don't know, it's not Joseph or Josephy, it's just Joe, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Actually, no, it actually is Joseph. It is Joseph? You can See, call me I Joe, know. Joe, Joseph. Doesn't okay, matter. so now I will. My family calls me Joey. You know, Joey? Also, oh, yeah, all perfect. Sorts of stuff. Perfect. Hi, Mom. <laughs> What's <right>. coming up <laughs> in sports? We're coming up in sports. Some next, we'll see some accolades from the GNAC, and we'll also see how things went for our volleyball teams in day one of the state tournament. All that and more, including high school hockey highlights after the break. Hello, Interior Alaska. Joe Cook here in a sports seat for you this Thursday with your local sports. The rule of thumb is to wait 30 minutes after eating before getting in the pool. Well, the UAF volleyball team has been waiting a few weeks since feasting off of their season opening victory. The Nags will get back in the Patty Center pool this Friday at 6 p.m. and Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. against the California East Bay Pioneers in a conference meet. The Pioneers lost to Simon Fraser their last outing on October 25th, but they are 2-1 on the year. UAF swept Azusa Pacific back back on October 18th for a 2-0 record on the year and in the PCSC. And that meet Alaska had four relay teams break into the top 15 Division II national rankings. Nine individual swimmers got into the top 30 national ranks. One of those is senior Margot Adams, who is 14th in the country in the 100 butterfly and a part of UAF's top 200 freestyle and 400 medley relay teams. She's ready to get back in the pool against Cal East Bay, as is the team. They prepare heavily for their dual meets. Generally, we're pretty prepared to race. Every week we do a lactate set, and that's pretty much six sprints in a row. And so it's almost an imitation of a meet schedule, except for a meet you have more time between events kind of thing. So I think for the most part, generally, the girls are ready to get up and perform well. This will be a good tune-up so they can get their uh, game face on, so to speak, and, and really get their tempos down for their individual races. When you get up on the blocks, they, they say it's 90% mental. So we've been putting in a lot of work. So the physical side we've taken care of, and I, I think they're going to be pretty focused. So we, we should see some really good swims. Some positive news from the Nanak Hockey Program this week as one of their players is the Raven Alaska Nanak of the Week. Marcus Bassar, the sophomore forward, wins this week's honor. Bassar scored two goals in last weekend's WCHA series against Bowling Green. He scored the equalizer in Game 1 and then game opening goal in Game 2. Bassar has four goals on the year, which is tied for the team lead with rookie Austin Veith. The all-rookie performer from a year ago is second on the team in points with six. The Nanaks are on a bye this week, but they will be on the road for their next WCHA series at Lake Superior State. The Nanak Cross Country teams were recognized for their academic success from the Great Northwestern Athletic Conference. Ten Alaska Cross Country runners made the GNAC all-academic team. From the men's team, Kenneth Brewer, Michael Fahrenbach, Isaac Lammers, Jonas Loeffler, and Ross McDougal. And for the women's team, Kaylee Stryker, Dorothy O'Donnell, Sarah Lilly, Hannah Stevens, and Nicole Bath. UAF tied Central. Washington with 10 all academic team runners. Western Washington had the lead with 13. The Nanox are preparing for next week's NCAA West Region Championships in Billings, Montana. Today is opening day of the ASAA State Volleyball Championships. West Valley and Monroe were looking for wins in the opening rounds today. In the 4A tournament, the Wolfpack lost to the Colony Knights in a tough five-set match, 25-16, 16-25, 25-23, 18-25, 13-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-23, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 18-25, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 25-16, 
2 to nothing at the 1327 mark of the second period. Then just 16 seconds later, Marcus Frank goes top shelf at point blank range at the pass from Blake Farnham. Hutchinson goalie Trevor Boswell made some nice saves in this one. 33 in all, Brandon Rustad did score for Hutch, but too much of the Malamutes. Gassaway leads late up with two goals. Hayden Masterson gets two assists as the Malamutes go on to win this one 4-1. to one. Ryan Ebenall and... Amelia Helms Leslie combined for 14 saves. Both Lathrop and Hutchison are now 2-2 two two on the year. And a last note, North Pole's Eli Sponseller will play for the Ar it, it will play for the Coast Guard Academy in the Armed Forces Classic tomorrow in Puerto Rico. His team, the Coast Guard Academy, plays Hampton Sydney College of Virginia. The senior is one of nine returners. Bond Seller averaged just under five points to three round three rebounds per game last season. The game will be televised Friday morning at 9 a.m. on ESPU. So check out the former North Pole Patriot. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz with you once again talking weather, and it was a beautiful day, like I said, across the interior. Our photograph night, sitting in by Bill Blizzard. Boy, look at that, a gorgeous sunset he was able to capture last night. And as always, if you have a photograph, by all means, send it to photos at ktvf11.com. We'll share it with the rest of the audience. And speaking of photos, once again, a reminder, Mike's Fab Photo weather calendar is out right now, free, many locations across the interior. Go to our website, webcenter11.com, and check out all the different places you can pick one up for free, like I said. Here's our numbers right now. 30 degrees, our high day 33, the low last night 25, record high 41, 1976, 36 below in 1989. Your sunrise and sunset, about six and a half hours of daylight. And as far as our air quality, well, once again, we have problems unhealthy for North Pole. Through 5 p.m. tomorrow, the elderly children and those with respiratory problems should remain indoors. Hopefully things will get better tomorrow. What's going on across the rest of the state? As you can see here, we have once again <clears throat> uh, high clouds moving across the interior and over southeast Alaska. Other than that, things are looking pretty good. And across the rest of the state, over southeast Alaska, once again, not too bad. Temperatures kind of chilly around Ketchikan, 38 degrees there. <clears throat> around the Anchorage Bowl, looking at uh, partly cloudy, 36 degrees. Kodiak, some showers. 46 degrees, really warm, 47 at Cold Bay, and then cooling off as you move further to the north. Barrel still 30 degrees, pretty nice. Fort Yukon, 10 degrees, and partly cloudy skies. Lower 48 weather, look at this. The temperatures, once again, very chilly. 13 degrees at uh, Denver, Minneapolis, 24 degrees. Seattle at 45, lots of sunshine there but still kind of chilly. And elsewhere across the uh, lower 48 on the satellite and radar, you can see all that cold air just diving down to the south. And once again, uh, the pinks indicating where the frozen precipitation is at. Also over the northwest, looking at quite a bit of moisture there. The stream of Arctic air will continue right on down furthest to the south tomorrow. And there's your little area. As you can see, a lot of folks uh, looking at some very unusually cold temperatures. And the overall outlook for this weekend is calling for very cold temperatures to continue across much of the country with widespread snow activity, mixed showers and rain all the way down to the Gulf Coast states. They had snow in Little Rock, Arkansas today, and more precipitation possibly across the Pacific Northwest. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow, the northern sections looking at mostly cloudy skies for Barrow, cloudy skies at Nome, and partly cloudy skies for Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, another great day in store, partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies across the entire region, and sunshine will be the rule over southeast Alaska with temperatures once again starting to warm up 43 degrees at Ketchikan. Over to the southwest we're looking at uh, rain for Cold Bay, wind and rain for Kodiak and rain should be diminishing in the Bethel area. And if you're heading on down the Anchorage area looking at nice weather there too. Becoming mostly sunny skies for Anchorage and Valdez and just scattered clouds for Homer. Well once again time for our kids weather and this week we've been talking with the kids from Hunter Elementary School tonight or actually this week but tonight let's hear from the teacher. Hi, my name is Mr. Brummel, and this is my class, uh, fifth grade class here at Hunter Elementary School. Whoa. And we have a weather fact to share with you. Class, did you know that the coldest temperature ever recorded in the world was in Antarctica when the thermometer dropped to 128 degrees below zero? Now, they weren't expecting that weather fact. Again, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our weather. And next week, we'll have for the kids from Joy Elementary School as our guests. Well, it's Thursday night, which means it's time for uh, the idea of passing along to the road conditions that we're supposed to be here, but they're not. But I will tell you right now, for the most part, all the roads leading in and out of the Fairbanks area are looking like there are some areas of ice. Be watching the bridges and also looking at possibly some snow removal equipment on the roads to keep your eyes out for them. They could be a, a little bit of a 
traffic hazard. Tonight, we're looking at 8 degrees, mostly clear skies and a little colder, maybe some auroras out there. How about that? Tomorrow's forecast, partly cloudy and not as warm, 22 degrees for the high. And the extended forecast, as you can see here, looking at temperatures warming back up again by Sunday and Monday, continuing for Tuesday, not too bad on Wednesday. No precipitation once again in the forecast. Amazing. And the overnight lows will also once again be warming up to around 20 degrees by Monday night and Tuesday night. Sounds good. Yeah, man. I'm just loving this weather. That's incredible. fantastic. Just incredible. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah. yeah keep the good times rolling. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, the growth is coming in for both Mike and I. Yeah, and, and me. You. I'm He's a little, I'm still baby yeah. faced. Yeah, yeah. and it's all in support of men's health and cancer research. So uh, if you want more information, Movember.com. Okay, that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We're glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, bitter cold, icy roads, and steady snow are